Mexico is rolling out a $5 billion mega project called the Interoceanic Corridor of the Isthmus of Tehuantepec. And if it works the way they're planning, it could seriously shake up global trade. We're talking about a project so big, some people are already saying it could end the Panama Canal's dominance. Bold claim, right? Well, let's unpack this. Before we get into Mexico's master plan, let's rewind. Because you've got to understand the history to appreciate just how wild this shift really is. Back in the early 1900s, shipping stuff between New York and San Francisco was a logistical nightmare. Option one, drag it across the entire U.S. by land, which was painfully slow and expensive. Option two, put it on a ship and send it all the way around South America, braving the infamous Strait of Magellan. Storms, unpredictable currents, and weeks, sometimes months, at sea. Not exactly ideal. That's where the U.S. decided, you know what? Let's just cut through Central America. Easier said than done, the construction of the Panama Canal was brutal. Workers battled landslides, heat over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and mosquito-borne diseases like malaria and yellow fever. And engineering-wise? Forget about a simple ditch. They had to invent an entire system of locks, massive water elevators for ships, to get vessels up and over the continental divide. After 10 grueling years and about $375 million back then, roughly a billion in today's money, the Panama Canal opened in 1914. And instantly, it became the lifeline of world trade. Fast forward to today, more than 10,000 ships use it every year, hauling over half a billion tons of cargo. To say it's important is an understatement. It's the beating heart of maritime commerce. But here's the problem. The world of 1914 is not the world of 2025. Ships have gotten bigger. Trade volumes have exploded, and even with expansions, the canal is hitting its limits. Add in droughts, like Panama's record dry season in 2023 that forced them to slash the number of ships allowed through. And suddenly, this beating heart is showing signs of cardiac arrest. And this is where Mexico makes its move. See, this isn't even a brand new idea. Way back in the late 1800s, Mexico's then president, Porfirio Diaz, had a vision build a railway across the Isthmus of Tehuantepec, the narrowest stretch of Mexico connecting the Atlantic and Pacific, and he actually pulled it off. By 1907, seven years before the Panama Canal opened, the first train was already hauling cargo across the Isthmus. For a few years, Mexico was riding high. Trade was booming, cargo was moving, and the country suddenly found itself at the center of international shipping. But then, 1914 rolled around, the Panama Canal opened, and boom, Mexico's shiny new railway was instantly old news. Cargo volumes crashed by 80% in a single year. Within a decade, the line was basically abandoned, left to rust as the canal dominated global trade. Fast forward more than a century, and history is repeating itself, but with a twist. Mexico's current president, Andres Manuel López Obrador, decided in 2018 to resurrect the dream. Only this time, it's bigger, shinier, and way more ambitious. We're not just talking about a dusty old railway line getting a facelift. The CIT is a full-on multimodal transportation corridor. Think about it. Three major rail lines, over 1,000 kilometers of track, highways running parallel, and this is the big one, brand new deep water ports on both the Atlantic and Pacific ends. The idea is simple, but powerful. A ship pulls into one coast, drops its containers, those containers hop onto trains or trucks, and within hours, they're on the opposite coast, loaded onto another ship and back on their way across the ocean. Now you might be thinking, wait, how can a train possibly compete with a canal? One's land, one's water, it's apples and oranges. But here's the kicker. In many cases, the train option could actually be faster. And for the megaships that are too massive to squeeze through the Panama Canal, the CIT gives them a workaround that doesn't involve weeks of sailing around South America. And it's not just about speed. This corridor has the potential to create half a million jobs and attract $50 billion in investment. 
For one of Mexico's poorest regions, that's a game changer. It's not just infrastructure, it's nation building. But here's where things get spicy. When construction kicked off in 2020, Mexico didn't waste any time. Old tracks were ripped up, vegetation cleared, and fresh steel rails laid down. But there was one problem. A section of the old railway was owned by a private company. So what did the president do? He literally sent in the army to seize it. That's how serious Mexico is about this. Controversial? Absolutely. But effective? Also yes. Now let's talk about the Panama Canal. Is this the end of an era? Not exactly. At least, not yet. Officially, Mexico isn't saying they want to replace the canal. The messaging has been more along the lines of, we're here to help. Think of the CIT as a pressure release valve. When the canal is backed up because of droughts, traffic jams, or maintenance, the corridor could take the overflow. But let's be real. If the CIT proves to be cheaper and faster for certain routes, shipping companies aren't going to stick with the canal out of nostalgia. Money talks. And if trade starts diverting toward Mexico, Panama is going to have to innovate, which honestly could be good for everyone. A little competition never hurt. And don't forget, this corridor isn't just about cargo. In December 2023, Mexico launched its first passenger trains along the new line. Imagine tourists boarding a sleek modern train in the Gulf of Mexico and rolling across lush jungles, mountains, and plains before stepping off on the Pacific coast, all in just a few hours. It's not just trade routes being reshaped here, it's tourism, culture, and connectivity. So what does this all mean for the future of global trade? Honestly, it feels like the start of a new chapter. The Panama Canal had its moment, more than a century of dominance. But the world is changing. Droughts are getting worse, ships are getting bigger, and supply chains are under pressure like never before. The CIT is Mexico's way of saying, hey, we're ready to step up. Now, will it work? That's the billion dollar, or in this case, $5 billion, question. There are still challenges ahead. Logistics, costs, environmental concerns, and whether global shipping companies will actually adopt it at scale. But one thing's clear. Mexico is no longer content to sit on the sidelines. And here's the part where I want to hear from you. Do you think this project could actually dethrone the Panama Canal in the long run, or will it just be a niche backup option? Drop your thoughts in the comments because this is one of those stories where the ending hasn't been written yet. Either way, the message is loud and clear. The days of relying on a single choke point in global trade are over. The future is about options. And Mexico, with its $5 billion corridor, just gave the world a pretty compelling one. So if you've made it this far, first of all, thank you. And second, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss updates on projects like this. Because trust me, this is just the beginning.